Man, I am excited to be in the house today. Um, so, um, oh, I feel free. Ain't no time clock. Y'all about to get the whole thing today. What a blessing. What an awesome honor to be um, in this place today. It's one of those things that I'm, I'm really, really excited that God would choose me to be able to illuminate his word and his gospel to anybody. And um, to be in this church um, in this year, after all of the transitions that you guys have been through, I just want to let you know that God's hand is on this church and that his hand is doing something really special in this area. But God never does something special in a house and he doesn't choose leaders that can handle it. And so for everything that the leaders of this church have been leading through, we have to honor Pastor Daniel and Jackie Groves for their phenomenal leadership. I'm going to give you five seconds to let them know at every campus, even if you're a visitor, you need to give God praise. We honor you guys. We thank God for you. It's just the beginning. And before you sit down, I brought my wife with me today. My... Hey, baby mama. After church, I'm going to lay hands and we're going to agree. Man. I love having fun in the house of God. The other thing that I love is when God sends me a place on assignment. And um, I, I see people here that are part of Hope City. I see people here wearing represent stuff and stuff. Transformation Nation, I love y'all for being here today. And, uh, um, but I came on an assignment. So like, I don't leave home for opportunities no more. And I pray that everybody gets to this place that you're so doing what God called you to do that you don't jump at opportunities. You only go when it's an assignment. Because when there's an assignment, that means there's an anointing attached to it. And anointing is not just this big word that church people throw around. It means God's approvals on it. And you only want to do things that God approves. Because when God approves it, he gives grace for it. He gives peace in it. And he holds you through the whole thing. And, 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 and when I was um, texted by my brother and he was like, yo, what about ending this Starter Kids series on October 30th? I was like, man, God's going to have to say something because I love being home. Like, I love being, and my wife liked me being home. That's why she's here. She wouldn't let me come by myself. She's like, if you going, I'm going too. Like, it's like it was like that. And, and God said, no, I need you to go to Hope City on assignment to let them know the season that they're in. Have you ever had a moment that you didn't know was a moment until after the moment? Yeah. Like, you in the moment, but you're not really taking the moment seriously because you think it's a regular moment. And then you look back five years and it's like, oh, that was a moment. <laughs> I came to tell Hope City that you're in a moment where God has chosen to make Hope, Hope City a, a, a place where he has given you an open heaven. And there are blessings and favor and there are instructions that he's pouring out right now that if you would have the faith to be able to believe God for everything that he's called you to do, even if it sounds crazy right now. See me, I deal in crazy faith. I deal in the stuff that nobody thinks is possible, but God somehow can still do. God said, if you will believe me right now, I will do the impossible. But the truth of the matter is most people do not believe. Today, I came all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma to let you know that Hope City is in a moment. This church is in a moment. If you're not connected to this church and you're not connected anywhere, this may be the place you need to get connected because God is choosing to connect anybody who is with this house into another level of acceleration into their purpose. And I don't know about you, but today I feel like there is faith that is building in this house. But hold on, golf claps. Because the truth of the matter is you don't believe God can do it for you. And the thing about faith is faith is never based on the person next to you. If you read all through scripture, God is never saying, because of the collective faith of the, all those people, then I'm doing this. He said, be it unto you at the level of your faith. So you can be sitting next to somebody because somebody's sitting next to somebody and be like, I don't believe what he's saying. And then I'm like, fine, baby, you can have everything you have right now. Nothing. But if... <laughs> But if right next to that person, you're believing God can do more. My expectation is raised. I came from a bad relationship, but my next relationship can be good. I came from a broken home, but God can restore this family. I'm looking for five people with faith in here. God took me out of that situation, and I can go into this essence where there's four more people. God can do the impossible. 
Somebody said, if I believe. So today I came to give you a shot of crazy faith. Because some of y'all are in situations right now where you don't know if it's possible. I am living proof. And there's so many of you in this room that are living proof that God can do way more with way less with people who will just trust him. And so as I begin to think, all right, Lord, what am I supposed to say? He said, you got like two messages in one and you got 38 minutes and 50, 40, 30 seconds to give it in. And so today I'm going to try to give first message, okay? Um, 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 I'm a regular degular dude from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Nothing really special about me except I obey God. Like when I feel like God's telling me to do something, I actually do it. And, and, and I just keep doing that over and over again. And somehow I'm here talking to you. And I had a felony case. I was addicted to pornography. You putting all your business out on the street? I just need you to know that God is no respecter of person. The title is pastor, but I'm a man that submitted my life to God. And when you submit your life to God, no matter who you are, he can take everything in your life and he can transform it. So I started, I started walking with God, and, and I'm going to tell you a really long story in like a really short amount of time. So me and my wife started pastoring a church called Transformation Church, but it wasn't Transformation Church. At first, it was a church called Greenwood Christian Center, and a white gentleman went to the hood to plant a church because he heard about what happened with the race riots in 1921, which really was a race massacre. You can look it up if you need to. And, and, and what ended up happening, he said, go to the hood and start a church. And that white gentleman was like, you sure me? And he was like, like, yep, I want you to go there and plant it. So he leads that church for 16 years, and then he sees me. And he was like, you should be the pastor of the church. I was like, you didn't hear from God. And, <laughs> and so anyway, like, I'm like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to do this. And God confirmed it to me, and, and it was so crazy, and I need to encourage somebody with this right now because I wasn't qualified. I had six months of high-quality Tulsa communicate. Tulsa Community College education. I'm talking about next level education. And, and God said, I, I called you because I used the foolish things to confound the wise. And there's some people that don't think they can do what God has asked them to do because they're not qualified. But God never calls qualified people. He only qualifies people that answer the call. And so I answered the call to go into ministry, started walking in this season. And then God was like, yeah, pastor the church. Well, started pastoring the church. And then this little um, series we did called Relationship Goals, it went viral. And then when, when, when Relationship Goals went viral, people were watching it on YouTube, and the people that lived in Tulsa that didn't know we was in Tulsa started finding out we was in Tulsa, and so they started coming to the church. Thank you, YouTube. And so we went from one service to five services in 10 months. They was trying to kill me. And I was like, I'm not about to do this. Like, this ain't no long-term solution. And God was like, I already gave you the plan. Um, and, and I was like, you already gave me the plan. And I went back in my notes because I get vision from God and I'll just write stuff down. It sounds crazy until it happens. And so I'm sitting in my daughter's room on 37 days after I become the lead pastor of this church. And we don't got no money, no people, people, like 250 people coming and they choosing every time. I don't like his outfit. I ain't coming back. So it was like this really weird situation situation. And God said, you're going to own the Spirit Bank Event Center in this city. Well, the Spirit Bank Event Center was a building that was built for $58 million and it was huge and we didn't have anything to do it. I wrote it down because I'm crazy. I mean, it didn't cost me nothing to just write down what God said and just put it in my backpack just in case it ever actually happened. And so five years later, we're sitting in this moment and God said, I already gave you the plan. He said, believe me for this. I believe you. So I pulled the sheet out. I was like, Natalie, look what the Lord said. We going to own this. And she said, oh, okay, I trust God with you. And I told the team and I started believing. Long story short, literally 2019, we bought the building, okay? After, hold on, hold on. Yeah, let me finish the testimony. <laughs> It was built for 58 million. We bought it for 10.5 million and paid it off in five months. Okay? Now, watch. Okay. I'm telling you all of this to, 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 to get to what I really want to tell you. When that was done, I was like, wow, God, you're amazing. And what the Holy Spirit told me is, Michael, that was just the beginning. And I was like, no, 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 no. I, I don't think you understand. Like, I used all my faith up. Come on. Hey, have you ever been in a moment where you had to like pray and believe and you did it and you finally got into the college or you prayed and believed and you finally got out the relationship or you prayed and believed and you were like, whoo, whoo, whoo. 
And so I was like, oh, I'm done. Like, I, I believed you. It happened. People know I'm not a liar and I'm not crazy. Like, you did this? Good God. I could have been raptured at that moment. I could have just flown away at that moment. I was ready to go. And the Holy Spirit, as I was driving in to the church, he said, don't take your foot off the gas. And I was like, don't take my foot off the gas. What does that mean? While you have already been working in this level of faith and you've seen a miracle, why would you now retreat instead of move forward? And I was like, God, I don't know. He said, don't take your foot off the gas of faith. Keep pedal to the push until I'm no longer supplying you with what you need. And I'm saying, well, what does that mean? He said, I want you to buy up this entire area. I was like, Lord, what are you talking about? Well, then I looked outside the building we own, and there were seven other buildings that had 35 commercial properties and the land Chick-fil-A was on. And I was like, <laughs> now, you know I like some Christian chicken, and so I, he said, don't take your foot off. Keep believing me. And I don't know who I came here for. But you've seen God do a miracle in the past. You saw him get you through that situation before. You've seen him make a way. You weren't supposed to get into that school. Your family's not supposed to be together right now. You were supposed to OD a long time ago, and you saw God make a way. And now, for some reason, you think that if God does something else, it's too much. He said, this is not built on what you believe that you think I can do. I'm telling you, there's more in the tank for me to do in your life. I just need you to have the faith to believe I can do it. The Bible says, when the Son of Man returns, will I find, not prayer groups, not tweets and posts. He said, will I find, everybody shout at me, faith. I said, shout at me, faith. Okay. So I started believing God. Long story short, a year later, we bought the entire complex and the land that Chick-fil-A sits on. That Christian, ah, y'all boss, she. And guess what the Lord told me after we did that? Don't take your foot off the gate. I'm trying to show you a theme. When God begins to do something in a house, he's not doing it for a moment. He's trying to create everybody, say with me, a pattern. What God is doing at Hope City right now, I don't know if you know that you guys are in a unique season of God taking something that the enemy thought he would stop. And he's bringing water out of rocks right now. He's making people do stuff in the city that they've never done before. He's making things happen. And anytime, listen to me, that God does something for his house, it's a beacon of light to show you what he wants to do in your house. I don't care nothing about no buildings. He cares about his people being built up to believe he can do anything through their lives. And this season that you're in right now, it's a crazy faith season. I just came all the way from Tulsa to let you know, don't take your foot off of the gas. What he's asking you to believe for, that nonprofit you're supposed to start, those children you're supposed to help, that healing that you need in your body, do not believe the lie of the enemy that God can't do it. He came to do the things that nobody else can do. And God wanted me to tell you, pastors, do not let this church sit back and be okay with yesterday's miracle. His mercy and grace is new every single morning. And he wants you to believe in another way. And I know there's some people in here. Is this what he came to say? Don't receive it. it I'm, I'm on a plane in the next coup day. I don't care. I'm going back home to a, a, a faith-filled environment that God asked me to bring to you. For you to believe him beyond what your situation, your bank account, and all those things say. And so, so, so my first message today is what? Don't take your off the... And some of y'all haven't put your foot on there in the beginning. And so today my challenge to you is to just believe God. Start today. Some of you, today is the day you join the church. Some of you, the day I was just baked to get you here. But when you got in this seat, you felt home. And you felt seen. And you feel like, dang, why do I, I shouldn't have came today? Because now I'm responsible 
for what God has shown me. And I'm telling you, this is going to be the next level of what God does in your life as you believe him in faith. Message one, done. Start a new note. Message two. I said, God, how in the world are, am I supposed to tell people to believe you in faith? He said, faith and generosity are connected. And many people do not have the faith to believe me with what they have. And so I was like, all right, Lord, how am I supposed to explain this to him? He said, share your life with him. Share what I've done and how I took you from being broke, how I took you from being selfish, how I took you from being greedy, and I turned you into somebody who is generous, who gives whenever I will take clothes off my back, take shoes off my back. I will give whatever God tells me because I realize it ain't mine anyway. And the truth of the matter, for God so loved the world that he did what? It is the literal theme of the Bible. And most of us, for we love ourselves so much that we keep. You got clothes in your closet right now that you haven't been able to fit for three years. <laughs> Let's be very clear. And you're not working out to even try to fit into them. What are you doing? We, we, we do things. We have shoes and we have, we have things that we have placed value on that God said, give it away. See, anytime I talk about giving, church people, they booty get tight. Like everybody booty starts clenching up because you think I'm talking about money. Giving has to do with everything that you have. Some of y'all could give connections, but you're selfish and prideful. So you won't even share your connections. And God says, that's a heart of greed. I want you to get my heart. There's enough uh, around for everybody to be able to do everything that they need, but you're stopping it. You became a reservoir instead of a river. So I can't trust you with anything else because if I give it to you, it stops with you. But I'm looking for a church to rise up that when God gives you something, you're saying, God, where does it go? Who is it for? Who do I bless? Somebody shout at me, generosity. See, the truth of the matter, you see, there's like four people like, You haven't got it yet. See, I, I, I'm proud of your pastors for teaching on tithing and giving and teaching about the heart of generosity and faith because what most people are is locked in poverty mindsets. If you hoard everything, you're a holy hoarder. You got so much, and God's saying, man, I blessed you so you could be a blessing, an extension of me on this earth, but you think somehow by having more makes you more. I'm another level. I got Louis, Gucci, Prada, J.J. Prada. And God said, if that's what made you, when I put my name on you, that's what made you. When I called you my own, that's what made you. So what I need you to do is get my heart. And what I found is that tithing, giving 10%, I found that it's the lowest level of giving. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to tell you the truth, but I found like the key. Like most churches and stuff, like if everybody would just tithe, if everybody would just give 10% of the income, and you sitting there like, you ain't getting nothing from me. And it's so crazy because like 7% of everybody that calls themselves a believer, only 7% tithe. So out of every thousand people, less than 100 give 10% to God. And so the church is always begging people for stuff and all that other stuff. And I like, I like, we're like, ill. Because what God showed me is that 10% is the lowest level of trusting God there is with your resources. And people are begging people to get to the first step. Like just, just one step up. And, and I found out because the 10%, it's already God's. He's just giving you an opportunity to, to return it. Because he wants to know where your heart is. The Bible says wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. That's why right now, some of y'all, if somebody scuffs up your shoes, you ready to fight. Because where's your treasure? Some of y'all check your bank account more than you check on your kids. Because that's where your treasure is. Some of you have cars. You won't let nobody ride in. It gets more bass than you do. Because <laughs> why? Uh-huh, you stink. And what, why? It's because that's where your treasure is. God said, would you put your treasure in my house so that I can do 
what only I can do with it. And, and, and this is the crazy thing about it. The IRS, they don't trust you. So they take their percentage. That's more than 10% from you. you but you don't even see it. But we don't trust you. The reason God doesn't do anything like that, because it can't be love if there's not a choice. Anything that's forced is robotic. And God desired to have a relationship with you, and he wants you to be generous. But I, I got to tell you, tithing? 10%? That's low level. Today I came all the way from Tulsa to tell you, write down the title of this message, there's levels to this. Returning 10%, that's the lowest. Like, I pray that you be able to get to that place by the end of this year. It don't take faith to give 10% after you paid everybody. It takes faith to say, God, I'm going to honor you with this. And the truth of the matter is you waste the 10% every, every month anyway. You done bought some coffee from Starbucks, a latte, tati, venti, titi. That was nasty. <laughs> and you threw it away. You buying all of these juices with kale and turmeric and, 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 and poop in it. I, I, it's just, it, trying these clothes on that you bought from Asia and they said extra large, but they actually are small. Some of y'all, you already know. He was like, it's only $6. Like, they use $6 worth of fabric on that mug too. We waste it anyway. What would happen if the whole, I don't even talk about the world, what if just Hope City decided we're going to believe God fully when it comes to our resource and develop a heart of generosity and the 10%? That's just, everybody say first level. first level. The reason why I need you to get this is because the other levels, it gets fun at the other levels. But most people spend their entire life fighting with the first level. And it's because I'll take ownership for everybody who's taught this in the wrong way. Most people do not give God's heart when they talk about the tithe and offering. They're using it as a manipulation scheme to be able to get people fearful into giving. But God tells us very clearly, don't give anything under compulsion with manipulation. See, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get you to get it in your mind, to get it in your head so it can drop down to your heart and then it can come out in your hand. And so I want you to look at Malachi 3, because this one has been jacked up in the church for a long time. Will a man rob God? Because you're robbing him in the tithe and offering. Like, dang, hold on, bro. That don't feel like the God of love that I know. And when I was reading this and listening to this, the Holy Spirit said they got the wrong heart. That's what it says. But God told me, he said, Mike, you can't rob me. How you, Mike, for real, how you going to rob me? The God of the universe? You gonna stick me up and take something from me? <laughs> you can't rob me. Except of the opportunity to bless you. Can a man rob God of an opportunity to bless him? Yeah, because just like any good father or mother, if you tell your kids, clean your room, and if you clean your room, I'm gonna take you to this special place. And your kid's like, that's great. No, I'm not cleaning my room. And you're like, I ask you to do it my way. Hey, at this house, we keep it clean. Just go clean your room, and then we'll go. If the kid continues to tell you they're not cleaning their room, they're not going to do it your way, you would be a bad parent if you still give, gave them the blessing that was already prepared for them because they do not listen to the thing that you know is best because you're trying to teach them for their future. You're trying to teach them, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, to manage what's small right now one room in a house, because you know one day, eventually, they will be brought into an entire house. And because they are not doing it your way, you cannot release the blessing to them. May I submit to you that many people in the presence of everybody that's here, a lot of your blessing is held up because you're not listening to dad. Dad said, would you just give the 10%? And, and he said, he said I, you're robbing me of an opportunity to bless you. I wish you would trust me. So let's look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 8, and I'm going to add that little part on the end. Will a man rob God of an opportunity to bless him? Yet you rob me of many opportunities to bless you. But you say, in what way have we robbed you of an opportunity to bless you? In the tithes and the offering. God created a way that any moment, any believer decides, you know what? I want to be qualified for a blessing. 
You can go and honor God with what he's already given you because 90% with God's blessing is better than 100% without it. But again, that's the first level. Somebody say there's levels to this. Let me take you to the second level real quick because this is where it gets fun. First level is tithing, but the second level is offering. Offering everything that God tells you to offer. See, everybody, when they say offering, you think it's the bucket passing. Offering is when God says, give that away. Huh? Give that. I just got it. And now it's not yours anymore. Give it away. One of the ways that God taught, tests me with offerings, tithe is done. It come out automatically. Like I've been honoring God like that. For, but one of the ways God started testing me with offerings is the homeless people on the corners. And this was a test for me, and I don't know if it was for you, but I've been seeing too many documentaries and conspiracy theories, and like these people live in mansions somewhere, and they just like doing this. Holy Spirit said, give him some money. I said, God, he's conning me. <laughs> I don't even know him. I was like, I could make that sign and say, we'll, we're like, he's conning me. God said, I didn't ask you to qualify why you're supposed to give to them. He said, when it leaves your hand, you obeyed me. Well, I don't want to enable them to be, a, I didn't ask you all of that. And we had all these excuses sitting at the stoplight, just waiting for it to turn green, like turn green, turn green, turn green, turn green. And the Holy Spirit said, you ain't got my heart yet. You started tithing, but I told you to give and you're debating with me off of your opinion instead of offering what I gave to you. Oh, that's nasty. What I'm saying to you, if God tells you to give an extra hundred in an offering plate or to go to your closet and take everything out that you didn't wear last year, but still got tags on it. God said, can I get an offering? Because offering is the place of, watch this, multiplication. See, God's favorite math is not addition. It's multiplication. After you honor him with the basics, when you come up to the second level, boop, boop, then what happens at the second level is whatever you give, he multiplies. Let me tell you, in Luke, there's this story about um, um, the fish and the loaves where God feeds a bunch of people. Let me set the scene for you, and you can go back and look at it because I got 17 minutes and 14 seconds. Um, um, what ends up happening is Jesus preaching to a bunch of people, like 20,000 people in one day, and what ends up happening is the disciples get hungry, and they're like, we should go tell Jesus like it's time to wrap it up. He's like literally been preaching for six hours, and everybody's hungry, especially us. So they go to Jesus, and it's like, hey, Jesus, ain't no Chick-fil-A's or church's chickens around here. These people need to be able to go home so we all can eat. And Jesus looks at them and says, you feed them. JC, I don't think you understood what I just said to you. What I said is there's nothing here. This is a desolate place. There's not enough. And Jesus says, but with me, there's more than enough. The same way he's saying to some of you, God, when I look at my situation, there's not enough to offer anything to anybody. He said, but with me, there's more than enough. He said, what do you have? We got a... Uh, a long John Silver snack pack that we sold from a little kid, two fish and five loaves. And he said, that'll be enough. And then watch what he asked them to do. Sit all 20,000 of these people down in groups of 50. Organize what seems to not be enough. I'm giving you a key right now that some of you are waiting for God to do a miracle. And he's saying, I can't do it until you organize what you have that you don't think is enough. That, well, God, I can't give like that. He said, find out how much you owe. Find out where your, where your payments is going. Find out how much you need to do this car payment. Find out where the, where, just find out everything. Find out how many Netflix, YouTube subscriptions. You, find out all of that. Organize what you think I can't do a miracle in. And these people, I bet they had an attitude. 41, 42, 42, 44, 45, 46, 47, 40, 49, sit down. Sit down. 43, 45, 46, 47, sit down. And they probably like, God, why? This don't even make no sense. All we have is two fish and five loaves, and I can eat that by myself. And you telling me to organize? God many times will ask you to organize your situation so that you can see how big of a miracle he's about to do. What did the disciples do? He says, bring me the, the thing you think is not enough. And look what it says he does. Ooh, 
I love the Bible. This is in Matthew. Um, no, we'll go to Luke chapter 9, and I'll just, for sake of time, I'm going to go to uh, chapter, I mean, verse 16. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he blessed it. That's the tithe. We gave it back to God. He blesses it. Then he broke them, and he gave them to the disciples. Now, hold on right now. I gave you my little bit. You broke it and gave it back to me. Not the whole thing, not the multiplied thing, less. How this about to work? And then he said to them, now go offer it to the people. Go give an offering. Give it away. Jesus, the math ain't mathing. I gave you my little bit. You broke it. You gave it back to me. And now you're telling me on top of that, give something away? I bet they had an attitude. Take just a little bit. Take just a little bit. I said, LaShonda, get your nasty little greedy little boy. I said, take just a little bit. And when it gets to the last thing, the miracle doesn't happen in Jesus' hand. The miracle happens in the hands of the disciple. Many of you are looking for God to be a lottery God for you. And, and boom, and then you get it. He said, as you give away, as you obey me, as you offer it, I'm going to allow it to multiply in your hands. I bet he got down to the last one and he was like, well, this is it. And somehow what was in his hand didn't end. It grew. Take some. Take some. Take some. <laughs> like, have you ever been shocked how God made a way? where there was no way. And it probably got so good to when it got down to the and then expanded again. He was like, hold up. Y'all hungry? <laughs> Attitude change. Hey, food for everybody. Like, your attitude changes when you see God. But it would have never, it wouldn't have even been enough for the disciples to eat if they would have kept it. What I'm telling you right now is there's levels to this. And some of you, for the first time in your life, you're thinking, what can I actually give away? What can I be a part? What can I put my eternal treasure into? But that ain't even the last level. The first level is what? Tithing. The second level is what? Oh, but the third level Ooh. is sacrificial offering. How do you know it's a sacrifice? It hurt. It make you say, mm. it meant something. See, a lot of people they think they're doing something when they give something that don't mean nothing. Let's be honest. Have you ever re-gifted something? Okay, y'all going to be liars on this side. <laughs> But have you ever re-gifted? How many people in the room have ever re-gifted something? You gave something away to somebody that you didn't want. And you were like, but they like it. So you be feeling good about yourself because like two for one. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but have you, ever, have you ever given away something that you currently still loved? That's a, that's a sacrifice. And this third level is where God does the miraculous. When people start giving sacrificially, like I could, I'm still, this is still, I need that. And God said, yeah, but trust me with it and watch what I do with it. This is the level that David walked in when it was time to build the temple. He gave sacrificially over and above extravagantly to the work of what God was doing. When, when he could have just given a little something, he gave the equivalent of today, 21 billion to the temple being built. His son Solomon, when the customary requirement was one bull to be sacrificed, Solomon sacrificed a thousand when there was only one required. When is the last time you did more than what God required? You want people to do that for you all the time. But when was the last time that you weren't praying for a prayer to be answered, but you were the answer to the prayer. I'm trying to level you up. Somebody say, there's levels to this. Say it with your chest. There's levels to this. There was a woman who anointed Jesus' feet 
with perfume. It was a year's worth of wages. That was a sacrificial offering. See, you think it's about amounts. It's not about amounts. It's about obedience. There are things that God is telling you, and this week you're going to see he's going to be telling you to do certain things at certain times, and you're going to have to know this is not about me loving this stuff. This is about me obeying God. And right now, I even see it in the spirit. There are people that are hearing and sensing and feeling, and God's like, yeah, that, that camera, that thing, that per like that's not yours. I blessed you to be a blessing. And listen, one of the greatest sacrifices was a woman who gave two mites. Ooh, ooh. All these people were coming to the tabernacle and they was laying down racks, throwing down bands of money, guac, cheddar, cheese, whatever other uh, salad, <laughs> queso, whatever type of money. They were throwing it down. And Jesus was watching, the Bible says, how they gave. He was not watching how much they gave, how they gave. And then this woman drops in two mites. And Jesus says, look at that. Disciples, look at this. Did y'all see what just happened? It's like, no, my man just dropped down a lot of racks. He made it rain in here. That was fantastic. <laughs> and Jesus said, y'all are looking at the wrong thing. That woman right there, all these people, yeah, we're excited about them. They gave out of their abundance. But this woman right here gave sacrificially. This woman has my heart. And I began to look at that, and I said, God, give me a heart that will look at everything that you've given me and be able to be an extension of you in this earth. And I don't know who I am talking to directly, but it's a bunch of y'all. You have been settling for the lowest level of blessing because you've been robbing of God of the opportunity to bless you on another level. You've been so selfish hoarding what God gave to you anyway. He said, if you thought that was something, watch what happens when you become somebody I can give through. Pastor Mike, how does that practically work in your life? I'll tell you. Um, I was pastor in this church and God was like, you like that revelation? I was like, God, that's gonna, there's levels to this. That's really going to preach. He said, you started tithing. Uh-huh. You started giving offerings. Uh-huh. What about the sacrificial offerings? Look, I'm, you know, I'm ready to do whatever you ask me to do. And he's like, all right, we're about to go to the sacrificial offering. I was like, here I am, Lord. Use me mightily. He said, are you sure you're ready to go to this sacrificial level? God, whatever you ask. It's all yours anyway. And I'm like, what amount? He said, no amount. And what am I supposed to give? He said, you know that, that car you just paid off, that Range Rover, that Land Rover with the things on it that you loved and you prayed for and you believed for? Give your car away. That's what I said. <laughs> she said, what? That's... And at that moment, I was like, I know the devil talking. <laughs> I rebuke you, St. John. Like, I knew it was the devil. But then I was reminded that the devil never asks you to give anything. Because he's a liar, and that's the character of God. So if you ever hear God say, give something, it's never the devil. And I was like, oh, shoot. Well, then, we'll <laughs> okay. So then what am I going to do after I give our only car away? Nothing. No words. Because God doesn't speak after he gives instructions until there's obedience. And so many of us are looking for God to give us the whole play by play all the way till we see the other side of it. And God said, that don't take faith. That's facts. It takes faith when you don't know. And I had to go convince my wife. I was like, hey, baby, I love you. I love you. Um, okay, so here's the thing. You know, I'm a man of God, and I be praying sometimes, and then God tells us to do stuff. I think God, I think God told us to give away our only vehicle. And she's like, oh. <laughs> and she asked me, what are we going to do? And I was like, I don't know. And this is why you have to live your faith out loud. 
She was like, I know you hear God. So I'm where I trust you. We're going to just walk this out literally <laughs> together. And then I was like, okay, so who do I get it to? I started getting excited. Like, who, who am I going to bless? Where's the single mother with 19 kids that I'm going to like, let me make a story. And God's like, yeah, no, it's the graphics guy in the back who's been riding the bus to do the graphics here. Give it to him. And then I was like, he don't deserve a blessing like this. <laughs> Can we be honest? Sometimes we be trying to qualify who get like, uh -uh. he hasn't lived enough life. I was like, that's who it's for. Get this man in my car. He's blessed. I'm crying. <laughs> I thought he was going to be crying and I would be blessed. I, no. And we got a ride home that Sunday. <laughs> oh, y'all think this is funny. <laughs> it's my life. Um, so after you give extravagantly like that, I mean, I thought it was like 24 hours that then God starts raining down Bugattis or something. Like, I thought it was like 24 hours, 48 at the max. One month goes by, no car. Two months, no car. Three months. I am the pastor of Transformation Church getting rides to service. Don't be late. <laughs> I got to preach. <laughs> like... This is real life. Five months, six months. And the seventh month, a woman let us borrow her 15 passenger van. We had enough space in that van to pick up everybody on the way to wherever we were going. <laughs> but we were grateful. And my wife, she was ride or die. She would be like, I'd be trying to park in the back because I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> let me just be honest because faith doesn't always look sexy. I, I was embarrassed, so we go on date night, and I'll be parking in the back. She'd be like, pull that thing up to the front. I said, okay! Like, she ride, ride or die. I said, you got whatever you want when I get it. <laughs> then the woman asked for the van back. What happens when you, it looks like your sacrificial offering, your, 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 I got to trust in you, it didn't come with the boomerang blessing. Y'all know that's what we want. We want to throw it out. <laughs> but God in that season was developing my heart to handle more. Do you want the things or do you want me? <sighs> so, so then this guy asked to take me out to lunch. And I was like, oh, bet. Like, yeah, I would love to go out to lunch with you. Uh, just one thing. For me to go out to lunch with you, you got to come pick me up. <laughs> So my man pulls up. This is real life. My man pulls up to pick me up in this fire luxury car. And I'm like, dang. I was like, who's his dad? And he was like, man, it's not even mine. He was like, I was like, who's, who let you ride that car? He said, it's yours. And threw me the keys to this car. And in that moment, look what the Holy Spirit said to me. You'll never beat me giving. And I said, what? And in that same moment, the Holy Spirit said, and you'll give this car away too. No, look, everybody said, ah, oh. <laughs> you missed it. I had been through the lesson to understand that God provides for those who provide yes. for others. Yes. I had learned the levels worked that I had started from a level of poverty. And now I got to the level of sacrificial offerings. That's the good news, y'all. If you don't take your foot off the gas and you obey what God's prompting you to do, if you start that first level of tithing, you'll get to the other two levels. And this is why I'm begging you and I came here to tell somebody this is the level God wants to take you to no matter where you're at right now. If you're on one level, go to the next level. If you're on the other level, go to the next level. God wants to take you from glory to glory because when he told me you'll give this one away too, I got excited. Because I realized the same God who provided when there was nothing is the same God that will continue to provide for me. I'm 35 years old, and we have given away collectively nine cars. Ooh, 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 ooh. And now I don't feel it the same way. It's now the pattern of our life. Why? Because there's levels to this. The first car hurt to give away because I thought that that's all God could do. But until I saw God do it to the next level, 
I realized that, oh, God will give me cars to give away. He'll bless me to be able to be a blessing. I'm telling you this because this is real life. God wants every one of you to know that wherever you're at right now, this is not the end. Everybody say, it's just the beginning. Today, I want your faith to be encouraged. That whatever God's asking you to do, whatever level he's asking you to go in, if you've never tithed before, take Pastor Daniel and Hope City's challenge to start tithing for one year. I promise you, you can never beat God doing what he asked you to do. 13 years now, me and Natalie have been tithing faithfully. And every year, God's taken me to another level. Why? Because he said, I see somebody who's doing it my way. All I'm telling you, you'll never be, afford, you, you'll never be able to afford to tithe until you start tithing. Everybody's trying to make it make sense. It won't make sense. It'll make a miracle. I'm telling you right now, I'm living this out. And when I think about sacrificial offerings, remember I told you all about that building that God blessed us with? Well, I've been walking in crazy faith this whole time. The first Sunday we got into that building, it was kind of a crazy moment for us because um, we were believing God and we had a conference and the Holy Spirit told me we can't go back to our other location. And the crazy thing about that is we didn't have nothing for this new location. We just rented all the equipment. So Thursday, I'm telling everybody, we're going to be here on Sunday. And Friday, they came to pick up all their stuff. No microphones, no drums, no nothing. God said, I'm about to do a crazy faith miracle. Well, the good thing about me preaching this message here at Hope City, and you're here to hear it no matter how you got here, is Hope City is a generous church. And everybody who's sown into this, you're a part of what God's doing under this open heaven. Hope City got wind of our need in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they were the first people to sow $30,000 into us having our first weekend in this crazy fake miracle. Oh, you can give God praise for that. Now, listen, listen, why are you telling us that, Pastor Mike? Because I told you that we serve a God of multiplication. I told everybody in the last service. I didn't come here to get anything. I came here to give it. And so in the last service, I let everybody know we gave Hope City. They gave us 30000 We gave, on behalf of Transformation uh, Church, we gave $100,000 to this church because we believe in what God's doing. But somebody say there's levels to this. So this is my last service. So we're giving you another $50,000. $150,000. Because we serve a God who does the impossible. Somebody say there's levels to this. God will take your seed in one season and turn it into your harvest in another season. This is not, this is not about your ability. This is about the ability of our God. If you have faith to believe that God can take you to another level, why don't you give him a shout of praise in this building? Listen to me. I never thought I would lead a church that would be able to give away in three services what we believed God for in a whole year. What I'm saying to everybody in here, God is not short on resources. But he is short on people who will believe. Why could this not be the place, the time and the season where you take the limit off of your God? You say, you know what? I'm going to do it dad's way. I'm going to tithe. I'm going to give offering. And God, whenever you speak, whenever you tell me, even if it's something I love. Oh, that's crazy. Giving something you love. Isn't that what God did when he sent his only son? He gave up something he loved so that everybody else, people don't say it like this, but Jesus was God's tithe. Think about it. He gave up his first and only so that all of us could be a part of the family. There's levels to this. And I'm going to just do the altar call, the salvation. If there's anybody in here who's never accepted Jesus, or you've been walking far away from him. You've been living your life on your own. I'm, I just feel this so strong. There are people that are coming back to Christ today and coming to him for the first time because you've been feeling a drawing and, and God's saying today's your day of salvation. 
Like today I want, I want to take you to another level. If you're in this room and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you're watching on rebroadcast, you're watching everywhere around. Today, on the count of three, we're about to, we're about to pray. And we're a family, I hope, city, so nobody prays alone. We're going to all pray together for the benefit of those who are coming to Christ. But if you're ready to go to the next level in your faith, you can't do it without Jesus. And today there is somebody in here was asking God, like, give me a sign that you're with me. Here it is, big black in red and blue with braids. He's, he's with you, and he wants a relationship with you. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, where you laid, what you smoked, what you're drinking, what you plan to do tomorrow. God's saying, if you would give me your heart, I'll help you change your habits. What hospital do you go to cleaned up? Stop trying to come to Jesus cleaned up. Just come to him and let him be the great physician and clean you up. Everybody, let's pray this prayer together today. And if you, if you mean this here a moment, we're going to celebrate and we're going to give you next steps. But I believe today is a day of transformation. The greatest level up you could ever do is what you're about to do right now. Would you just lift your hands and just say, God, thank you for being generous and giving me Jesus. Today, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I believe you lived, you died, and you rose again just for me. I repent of my sins, and I will serve you for the rest of my life. Change me, renew me, transform me. I'm yours in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, would you shoot your hand up real quick? Uh-oh, there's a celebration happening in heaven over one person who makes that decision. And there's tons of hands. Hope City, let's celebrate life change in this room. Hallelujah. Hear me. So proud of you. So proud of you. I'm so proud of you. This is the thing that took me from a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography, and it didn't make me a perfect man but it made me a progressing man. Your best days are ahead of you and the best days for you are connected to other people. If you are not connected in a local church and you live in this Houston area, you need to get connected to a group of people who believe in your purpose and destiny. And I don't know a better place than Hope City. It looks like heaven. Look at y'all looking like a bag of Skittles in here. Black, white, yellow, everybody in here. Purple, I see you, you dark, I see you. Everybody in here. But if you hate this, you're going to hate heaven. Let somebody know your name. Serve. Give. And I promise you, this will be the best year of your life if it's your best year spiritually. I'm coming back. Is it okay if I come back? Hope City is okay. When I, when I come back, I'm not expecting to just hear the miracles of what happened at the church. I'm expecting to hear the miracles of what's happening in the church. It's not about this. It's about this. I love y'all so much, Hope City. I can't wait to see what God does to you.